Hi everybody, I'm Brenda Wingert Haynes and today is day four on the biblical reflections and prayers for Christian unity. Look, the tears of the oppressed from Ecclesiastes 4, 1 through 5. Again, I saw all the oppressions that were practiced under the sun. Look, the tears of the oppressed with no one to comfort them. On the side of their oppressors, there was power with no one to comfort them. And from Matthew 5, 1 through 8, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. As a reflection, look, the tears of the oppressed. One might imagine that the writer from years ago witnessed atrocities like these with regularity. Life was very, very difficult during the times of the Bible. And yet perhaps this is the first time the writer has truly seen the tears of the oppressed, has fully taken in their pain and their subjugation. Today, overall in comparison, life is overall pretty good in 2022-2023, COVID-19 and its fallout notwithstanding. After all, at least in the U.S., most people, most of the time, have access to adequate, if not really great housing. Generally, pretty good food. Really, very clean water, municipal water. Billions of people around the world do not have many of these basic necessities. Things that millions in our country take for granted. There remains indeed oppression and suffering worldwide, nationwide, in our own communities. Acknowledging this painful reality has led to a global outpouring of long overdue compassion both in the form of prayer and protest for social and environmental justice. The progression from simply looking to seeing and understanding gives encouragement for us as actors on this earthly plane. God can remove scales from our eyes to witness things in new and liberating ways. And as those scales fall, the Holy Spirit provides insight and conviction to respond in new and unfettered ways. In this way, churches and its communities unite in offering comfort to those who have mourned, suffered, and who are oppressed. Regarding Christian unity, Matthew's account of the Beatitudes begins with Jesus seeing the crowds. In that crowd, he must have seen those who are the peacemakers, the poor in spirit, the pure in heart, men and women who suffered and mourned, those who hungered for justice. In the Beatitudes, Jesus not only names the people's struggles, he names what they will be, the children of God and inheritors of the kingdom of heaven. As Christians, we are called to see the holy struggles of our brothers and sisters in Christ. Here's the challenge. How have you engaged with Christian groups addressing suffering and oppression in your neighborhood, in your community, in your state, in your country, globally? How can these churches and church communities come together to better show solidarity with those suffering with oppression? For our final prayer, God of justice and grace, remove the scales from our eyes so we can truly see oppression around us. We pray in the name of Jesus who saw the crowds and had compassion for them. Amen.